because I feel like the headlines do the jokes about Trump at this point because nothing I is nothing is uh, decent anymore. Politics isn't decent anymore. The media isn't. I mean, you see headlines now that you would have never seen when you were younger. Like mm -hmm. they, it's like shots fired now. That's what headlines are. You know, you see politicians calling each other out on Twitter, calling each other out of their names. Like, you know, it it's it's like a a free for all. There is no there is no honor, right? So, but do you still write jokes about Donald Trump? Well, I, I wrote one um that was uh I wrote one like two weeks ago where I said, damn, I really thought the Antichrist would be a lot cooler or smarter. Okay. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> It's just like, really, the Antichrist is a stooge. He's just a moron. And, and that's, you know, so, yeah, I still write jokes about him. I write jokes about him like all the time. You know, I said, man, Trump is really giving racist, gun toting psychopaths a bad name. <laughs> he, he's giving them. Um, what about you, Clay? Do you write any jokes about um, Donald Trump or pol political jokes at all? I don't do any political humor, honestly. I think, like, uh, everything I always talk about on stage is always directed at me or, like, my experiences or my stories via proximity to something that happened just because I get into that more. But also, I hear so much political humor. I'm like, man, I remember what made me want to get into comedy, and that was always this separatism, like watching uh, science fiction. Like, it takes you out of the real world. So it's like when I'm laughing, I'm able to laugh at, oh man, let's laugh to stop from crying. But also at the very least, I am so uneducated on politics. I don't talk about anything I don't know. So you only hear me talking about science fiction, women, uh, extremely ridiculous people, and which I guess would coincide with some political things, but no, I never really touch on politics. But you know, it's funny, like uh, a lot of people didn't, right? So remember mm -hmm. when we started doing stand up, well, I started doing stand up, you know, Obama was right around the corner. And so the the there was not a lot of political humor. I mean, of course, when Obama became president, you heard a lot of the jokes about the first black president mm -hmm. and you know, what, you know, all the corny jokes about the White House is gonna have fried chicken and all that dumb shit. But, um, Donald Trump has made comedians who, ne I mean, Jim Gaffigan went from high rights to what you can. Like, do you, like, how much has had to happen for Jim Gaffigan to put down the hot pockets? And yeah. he's, he's yeah. like, we're not going to be free anyway. So what does it matter what I'm talking about? I saw that tweet. He said there's no future if we don't all speak out. You know, I don't, I'll tell you something. I, I spew all over Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. That's all I do is, is really kind of ugly, hard, you know, politics. I try to be like Kurt Vonnegut, who would like try to find the joke in the nuclear bomb. Um, but when I did stand up, I did not talk about that guy because I felt like here's how I felt doing a set. Cause I remember I did the Portland comedy festival. I did San Luis Obispo right before the pandemic. And I didn't talk about politics. And I know about politics and I've been writing politics for a long time. And Dennis Miller was my first job when he was a liberal. I delivered the paper at 11 years old. I read it every day. It was always my thing, but I didn't talk about it. I didn't talk about Trump in, in when I do shows because I felt like half the audience may like him and the other half may hate him. The half that hates him when I do that stuff, it's going to remind them of the asshole that's bumming them out which they could stay home and watch CNN if they want to be bummed out. And the other half is going to be like, this guy's an asshole. So I, <laughs> I stayed away from him because I really felt like, look, they're out for a good time. Just give them a good time. Just be funny. Right. Um, but online, no, I'm a monster. And I don't, I don't apologize for that. And I'm not, here's the other thing. I don't even think I'm changing hearts and minds. I don't have any bullshit like that in my head. I think if I try to write it so it's funny, but the truth is I want to be on record when it's over. Mm. I just want to be, when it's over, I want to be on record where they go, well, he saw it. And by the way, I told everybody he was going to win because yeah, yeah. Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton 
turned her back. Not not Hillary Clinton. The Democratic Party turned their. You watch fourteen. You know. You watch thirteenth. You watch Evan DuVernay's film, and you realize, oh, you guys, it up, man. Super predators. That came from you. You know that shit came from the Democrats. So I knew they were going to lose because they turned their back on the people who vote for them, and they mm. went with the corporate money the same way the Republicans do. But you know what? Corporate money is already all entrenched with the Republicans. That's why Trump outraises the Democrats right now. Because where do you think that money's coming from? You think the one percent wants Biden to win? And Biden, I don't even think he's like not one of them. He is one of them, but he's not quite as good as one of them. He's not going to let him mm. do whatever they want, take a shit in every lake, tear down <laughs> national monument or tear down you know national parks and drill for oil there. That's the problem. They know Biden's going to have to kind of be nuts, you know, mm. kind of say, hey, gee, let's throw a bone to the ninety nine percent. 